Keep 100% of your claim. Cheap for claims. If you've been hurt in a road accident that wasn't your fault, you should really talk to G4 Claims first. Unlike road accident solicitors, we don't charge you for our services, which could see you better off. To keep 100% of your compensation, have a chat with Nicole and the team. You'll be glad you did. Search online for G4 Claims. Keep 100% of your claim. G4 Claims. All right, guys, welcome to the first episode of When the Needle Drops with myself, Maka. And tonight, my guest is multi-award winning novelist for this guy right here, the Young Team, as well as Save the Rave creator, Mr. Graham Armstrong. Graham, how are you doing, sir? Nice to meet you, mate. Thank you, mate. Thank you, Maka. Thank you for coming on, mate. Obviously, I've spoken to a lot of people about doing this, and as soon as I mentioned your name, they were kind of like a local celebrity. So I thought to myself, do you know what? This is going to be uh, meaty. But if I can... Start obviously with the program. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of things that you might either don't have time to go into, or maybe they didn't want you to go into, or whatever it may be. So I thought to myself, let's get in and let's get the juicy stuff. <laughs> the boys for the scheme can just sit and talk about <laughs> how, how things grew up. So, um, born and bred in Airdrie. Hi, mate. Airdrie born. Um, never fucked off until I went to uni, mate. Aye. Um, it was weird, mate. The whole the TV thing just started out a conversation. Because I'd done a book show, so I did, uh, on the BBC, the big book club with Damien Barr. And basically, once I'd done the interview, they were like, this boy's all right talking. So they come straight out to me and they said, all right, and what, I have a conversation. And they said, tell us what you're interested in. And I just was like, I like, I like the rave and all that. But they said, we were looking for more kind of upbeat stuff. I said, everybody's a bit browbeat with coronavirus and all that, so they don't want anything too depressing. You know what I mean? So I said rave and they said, oh, we'll see what you can get, you know, and you can you can make an answer of these things and just say, oh, nothing comes of them, you know what I mean? I, but I, I, mean, think, it's I, mean def- I think it's definitely the case where you, when people who you don't know ask you questions of stuff that you're maybe not comfortable with or it's out with your comfort zone, you start to think to yourself, if I say the wrong thing here, these boys are going to be that. Who is this boy talking about? It's, uh, mate, I think it's like you need to strike when I am taught, do you know what I mean? Because see, they were like, ah, let's have a conversation about something and see if you... If you're lazy or you don't go and get it, mate, could you just be nothing, do you know what I mean? Nothing comes out. But I was like, right, I'm going to sit down and I wrote all the, <laughs> all the stuff out that I was thinking about PC DJs and how that became us, got to big hall raves. And I put it all down and I stole a lot of pictures off the internet, old Fantasia flyers and all that. Made something nice and colourful for them and they were like, this sounds amazing, by the way. Aye, I think so. so it came out of nothing, really. Don't get me wrong, I think a lot of people just do the same thing. They just go to the internet and take whatever they can because, I don't know, obviously when I was watching your programme, Looking at the, some of the, the stuff that you've got, tickets and posters, <laughs> people just don't keep these things. So, to be fair on you, I mean, luckily enough, you had them for, for the concept of that programme. It worked out ideal. Um, mm. Obviously, people just jump online and take whatever they want these days, and it's just... That's I was, I, it I'm a heavy nostalgic person, mate. I think, I think everybody around about in young teams is, man. We all look back all the time, you know what I mean? And um, the rave stuff is like the, the good bit of that, do you know what I mean? A lot of, there was no negativity with that, right, you know course. what I mean? So let's take it back. Obviously, we spoke off air. Uh, Glenn Mavis, born and bred in Airdrie. Hi, mate. Um, quite, what, what was it like growing up? Quite a rough, quite a rough area. How, how was it like growing up? Um, it was not, I don't think Glenn Mavis was the roughest, mate, and people would tell you that, you know what I mean? But um, at the time, we weren't really at war with anybody, right? Because the Green Girls ones and our, the GYT, right? And our elder ones hated each other. It was like a poisonous fucking thing, you know what I mean? But uh, their younger ones, we'd got pally with them and we used to hang about with them. They're right into music and all that. One of them was a DJ and their big cousin. So we hung about with them and that kind of like solved the conflict, you know what I mean? So it was kind of through that. And then um, all the Bush boys, one of the maddest schemes in Airdrie, all they come up, man, and one hall ones come up and we all just hung about the guy. It was, it was chaos, mate, you know what I mean? I, I think, I mean, obviously, I'd say to you, I don't, I don't know for the north side, I only know, only know the south side, and as everybody knows, the south side was just, it, it was bonkers, <laughs> it was it was like the jungle anywhere you went. Um, so the north side was kind of, see, it's barely north Lanarkshire, it was, it was a, a completely different ball game. We didn't really know where it came from that side, or we never really, even when we were going out, we never really spoke to anybody from that kind of area. Um, so it's all new to me to hear about how that side of it went. Obviously, growing up, Airdrie, um, you were saying about the, the Bush boys and that, and you got talking to a lot of the boys, so there wasn't really any kind of conflict when you were younger? Like no, the, the, no between us. Point. No between, no, there was obviously violence, you know what I mean? But it was more like individual violence that like you were in. Instead of being a town and, and schemes around a big city centre, we just had a tiny wee fucking couple of streets. So you, you end up rolling about with all sorts of fucking nuggets, I you know what I mean? it's just standard, isn't it? You will get your individual scars. Of course, you will. Of course, you will. Um, I think it was just a. I think it was just a process of growing up in the west of Scotland in that area, 
um, kind of the early 2000s into probably the, mid, the middle of 2000s. Um, so what, what for you, was it the, the was it the gang culture before it was the rave music, or was it the rave music before it was the gang culture? Uh, I think I think rave came first. So I did like I remember sitting with my mate had just got a computer and this was like the digital revolution, know what I mean? Yeah, at that time, know what I mean? 2001, 2002, and my mate fucking his mom and dad were quite well off and they got a computer, know what I mean? I was like, oh, fuck's sake, so I got a computer and all that, know what I mean? And who's, who's the internet, a computer these days? I know on the internet, know what I mean? And he's like, you heard of that DJ ranking? And I was like, no, because he'd a big brother that was about five years older. Right. So he was in running about and all that. So I, I was like, oh, fucking hell, man, that's a fucking all right. And then we started downloading tunes. My mom got a computer, 2003. And like, I remember, man, sitting, trying to, you know what I mean, trying to type your fucking slow. You didn't know how to use it and all that. And the worst thing is, see, when you bought a computer back then, like, you would have to say to your mom, I'm not going to get off the phone and use the internet. <laughs> no, we, I got got broad, we got broadband. I didn't even have it when it was dial-up, you know what I mean? That's, we didn't have internet, you know what I mean? Well, and then that you, was... I remember the days I, I had to download tunes, <laughs> or even the worst when you're trying to put two phones together and you were doing it through infrared, trying to download tunes on each other's phones. Um, but obviously, so the day... The rave was just kind of a natural, I thought it was kind of a, just a natural concept within the, the gang culture. Um, I, don't, it was. I don't think I've many seen this disrespectfully, people want to talk about it. If you were in that scene, you didn't you were, didn't really understand it. People who had such a, a, a kind of narrow-minded look at it, as of to say, people, oh, you, they're bams just because they're in a gang. They don't know how, A, you got into that culture, B, if there was any reason of, of why you were staying in that culture. They didn't really get, they just seen Neds and thought, well, I don't want to. I don't want to cross them. Low value people, mate. No, I mean in a lot of ways, and like for, and you know, so when when they did it right, it was it was mental, right? And obviously we're getting involved in scuffles and all that, right? But my real experience of gang culture didn't really start until I got expelled, right? For your drink I mean, I went down to Cobra Chai, and Cobra is like fucking got as go, mate. Do you know what I mean? Like they've got their young teams don't fucking mix. Do you know what I mean? And they war constantly. So I ended up getting in with Ryan Toy, and I ran about with the boys doing it where a time capsule was. And that was, that was it, really. So the young team's kind of a mash of the two gang cultures put together. Do you know what I mean? Loads of the experiences are here today, you know what I mean? And then the war is kind of co-bridge. So it's, that's what I mean. It's a wee bit more complex. Aye, you know do, I mean? do you think that that kind of set you up better, to have a better outlook of when you went to date to when you went to date about as you had the two different sides here? 100%. Aye, okay, you grew up near doing it. You, had, you see, you had your small scuffles, but you really went co-bridge and that's really when it exploded. 100%. Aye, mate. But actually, the worst two ones I ever got were in here, funny enough. But that's what I mean, here, was like, just because it wasn't that constant fighting didn't mean it wasn't full of fucking maniacs, you know Absolutely. what I mean? It's, it's and it's, else, it? you, 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 you kind of get these places where... It's got it's nice areas, but everybody's going. Everybody's going. It's bombs. And like the young team, obviously, people always say, "Is like how 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 much true is it? Do you know what I mean? Is that a memoir and all that?" And I'm like, ah, "Well, it's no, but everything that happened in the young team kind of happened to me. Do you know what I mean? Just vis a vis. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't one of my pals that killed somebody. It was sorry, it wasn't one of my pals that killed. It was one of my pals that killed somebody. So you just you turn things around and explore them in a in a fictional way. You know what I mean? It gives you so a bit of. Were you, you what year was it? You got expelled. Two thousand and three. Two thousand and three. Yeah. 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 um, 2005, I was 14. 14, High young. Stupid, mate. Just, just daftness? Just fucking arguing with a wee guy, man. He got fucking, obviously I had a wee boxing match, right? And then I went up to school the next day, wrecked him and up, man. Fucking jumped, fucking kicked fuck him, you know what I mean? Uh, As you do. Just try to go with a teacher and then that was that, mate. Uh, It was gone, man. You think you you know everything at that age, 14, 15, you think Alcohol, mate. We were fucking, you know what I mean? We started drinking in school and fucking just dogging it all the time. And then that was the beginning of the end for me, you know what I mean? It was... So was that, did that, did that so, last for a substantial period of time? So like obviously you were saying like the kind of 14, 15 is when you were drinking in school and you got expelled. Did that last years oh, more to that? Aye, mate, because fucking old bunch of it, it was like the frying pan into the fire in Cobridge, you know what I mean? Like, I think my mom and that was thinking, oh, it's got, that's it, no, he's, right. he's done the bad, you know what I mean? He's got to change his fucking tune, but no, mate, it was like, it was, it was a lot worse in there, so it got a lot heavier. You know what I mean? We're dogging school every day, man. Fucking addicted to drugs, of course. You know what I mean? Taking blues, even that young. You know what I mean? Blues, fucking smoking dope. It would have been solid every day. Sitting sucking buckets every day. You know what I mean? Then on to green, and then drug problems. You know what I mean? It's mentally right. think about when you're 14, 15, and you're you're doing these things. When you look back and you go, what was I doing? But obviously, <laughs> as I say, it, it, can I had say, the, highs and lows, wasn't it? Of course, mate. highs and lows. You know what I mean? Instead, and obviously, you took that and you put it in your book and. It's worked out for you. Um, so if we kind of take it further, so you, you were expelled from school, 
is that then when you started to kind of progress into listening to the, the, the kind of rave music and or was it did it come before that? So I was see it's funny, right? Because rave kind of took me off the streets in a way, because like the elder ones, right? Um, they'd have been about what, 18, 19, 20, 21, right? And I was only maybe 14, 15. And I just kind of naturally gravitated to them, right? Because I was just a bit wilder, mate. I just used to like no bother and stay out all weekend and all that. And the younger ones would get in and all that, you know what I mean? But I would just stay out and out and out, you know what I mean? So all the older ones were like, you. I was like the baby of the group, you know what I mean? Course, and then I'll never forget it, one of the lassies and that. They, they didn't, they weren't there that weekend, right? And they were away to Tiesto, the Elements of Life tour, right up at Ingolston. And that was like the first rave I'd ever heard of. And I was like, fuck's sake, man, I'm gutted, man, we missed that. And my mate was like, mate, don't worry, because fucking Fantasia's next month, where to go. And I was like, what's oh, Fantasia? And he's like, oh, you don't even know, man. Yeah, man. Fuck's sake, you don't even know. Right, you know what I mean? I was like, to man. 16, know what I mean? And I was like, he's like, you up for it, know what I mean? He's like, oh, they're my shite bags, man, they'll not leave here, do you know what I mean? Mate, we places, right? You're not yourself, right? It's not like a tin man. People just want to sit in gaffs and they didn't, they were scared to go out and do other places and know what I mean? So I was like, 100%, mate, right? I'll get money, I'll go, 50 quid for a ticket, fuck it. And mate, that was it. I remember jumping in the bus, right? And we, were, we went up that Necropolis, man. We were sitting scud in a care goal, man, and then went out, went through, got the bus to Breheed, and wow, man, that was the beginning, mate. Just I was fucking feel 16 year old, know what I mean? No idea what I was going to, no idea the heritage of Fantasia. And like the, the evolutionary sequence out of that rave and that organisation. Just how you guy really, man. Just, that was that, mate. So Carl, Never Carl, looked was, back. Carl, Carl was it really a thing that you were too familiar with at that point? Mate, like, I'd seen the, kind of all I'd seen with Carl's face was like posters. You know what I mean? When you drove by them and you looked to us, are you guy, what's that? You know what I mean? No clue. And then once I went to Fantasia, mate, that was that. And then it was Fantasy, Fantasylands was the first one and that was in the November. And that was a huge one. I convinced all the young ones to go and the full, full team went up. And then every single one of them made colours, fantasy lands, fantasia, show tech, the whole hog. I think at the time, especially, see when you drove past a colours flyer, and I think this is probably going to sound cliched, but when you drove by at colours, I it was all pinks and purples and yellows and blue. <laughs> so it did, it, 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 it caught your eye. Of course, and it you did. think to yourself, Especially in Airdrie, mate, when everything's grey and broken and fucking depressing, you know what I mean? And then you just see this colourful thing, you're like, what the fuck is that, ah, man? Yeah, like the, like the design and the marketing the raves and all that was genius, you know what I mean? Was, I don't know, mate. That was, it was revolutionary, mate. And no, I, I didn't, obviously, mate, I was a Rangers fan, right? And that, they used to have this big parade, right? And it was all the bands. I don't know anything about parades <laughs> and bands. I've got absolutely no idea what he's talking about. We, uh, and, and I remember my mate saying, you got to this, mate, and I'm like, absolutely not, mate, because Carl's Fest the next day and there's no chance I'm getting fucking lifted and see all that shit, mate. It just, it wasn't important to me anymore, yeah. do you know what I mean? I just kind of was transformed into this rave world, mate, and that was all I thought of it, and I lived for it. Your well, attitude changed at that 100%, point. 100%, mate. Else, Aye, because it was like the elder ones, and then you were, it was all about aspiration, mate, about going to the next one, and life just seemed to like peaks and troughs between the raves, you know what I mean? And that was like you built. My mum actually, obviously, she knew there was drugs involved, right? But she was happy because it was something you were interested in. You were actually leaving the, 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 the tune you were born and going to gain something, you know what I mean? Aye. So it was good, mate. It was positive. I suppose she, she's probably now thinking to herself, He's gone to a rave, but it's, I, I tell her it was a concert. A <laughs> I tell her it was a concert. And well, she's like, kind of is, I kind of is a concert. I know you spoke there about talking about Tiesto and most things, and I know mm. when the programme was on, you were talking about the time you were in the motor with the, with the, the, the two boys. <laughs> I mean, I thought about listening to Tiesto. Mm. Aye. Um, did that come? Before and after you were talking, obviously... That's, that was just right at the beginning, you know what I mean? That was that was just heading towards that, right? Aye. So I, 16, and then we did, it was funny, right? Because it, it wasn't a Subaru Impreza, I mean, it was my, my mate's dad's, dad's old taxi, it was a Mondeo. It was a Mondeo with 200,000 on the clock, you know what I mean? I'm sitting in the back, and, and I remember him putting a TD in, and see, anytime we get near a computer, we were like Gary McKeith and all that, and the elder ones were like, fuck's sake, you know what I mean? Because they wanted to sit with birds, and they didn't want PC DJ tunes. They were evolving into a new kind of... My or mature. I did. They want you to listen to Chipmunk Acapella's tunes out of time and out of key. And, and, that, and stuff like that. He's right? like, Tiesto, mate, you heard them and all that. And I'm like, no, mate, it's Tiesto. And he's like, it's the most famous DJ in the world, fuck's sake. You know, heard the Tiesto and you're taking it tight, you know what I mean? I'm like, fuck's sake. Well, kind of, the, the 2005 kind of era would just be probably as Adagio was, was really kind of <laughs> circulating and people were really starting to. I mean, I know Tiesto had been about before because I've heard a few stories of some of the older boys that were doing the tunnel and stuff like that when Tiesto done Ferry Coston's warmer. And I'm thinking to myself, Tiesto done Ferry Coston's warmer. I know, I didn't even know that. I was like, huh, really? 
I'd never even heard of ferry costing, mate. Like, and I remember I seen him build and all that, and I was like, "Who's that ferry costing?" And some cunts at me, "You're a fucking wee guy. You don't know nothing." And I was just laughing because you were a wee guy. Do you know what I mean? And you just didn't have a clue because all you knew. Just one of the ones, though. Like, <clears> if, you, if you you're saying you don't know ferry costing, but you probably did know ferry costing. You just probably didn't know nah. the name. Because you're probably listening to some of the stuff. Oh, well, we did. We did. I think we were kind of oblivious to the actual charts, right? And like the way people consume music, right, was completely different in the young teams and then in the west of Scotland at that time. Because literally, all we knew was madweight.com, PC DJs, crab, right? And I, I was telling my, my word, well, I was like, young teams just have websites. And she's like, what for now? So she just couldn't believe that. And, like and she's like, "What did you have websites for?" And I was like, "Fuck knows." Like, <laughs> I, was like, I was like, "I know that." So I was, was like, "Pictures," and I was like, "Yes, but no that." And I was like, "You've no idea we were using technology then." You know what I mean? And and it was like it was all new. And you, think, I, I, you know what I mean? You said that there. I'm starting to think about. The guest books. Like, sign the book. Sign the book. And it was just a case of slaughter young slaughter It was, man. It was pure arguments uh, and all absolutely. that. And it, it came along the same lines of seeing Glasgow Global Chat was at its biggest and everybody mm. was fighting the other night to be the DJ. Um, that was the way the guest book was. The guest book was just absolute slaughter. Everybody got on See all that, man. It's like, I, and a lot, like, obviously, right, there was a wee bit of negativity between Scott and the Dave, right? Some of the elder boys were kind of having a wee pop at it and saying that's all a shite and PC DJs and all that. But, right, see, to us, right, they don't realise it. See, that where they started, right? So they started with the organic, right? They were starting, right? They were going to be proper professional stuff, right? But they were probably a bit older than us, right? We were 14. We were wee guys. We were just in school. Do you know what I mean? And the way we consumed it and all that. So PC DJs was, was everything to us, mate. You know what I mean? It was, it was like a religion. I think you're right when you say I think the PC DJ side, it certainly it shaped a generation. Um, and you were talking about some of the older boys that may, you obviously had Malaka Leo on, on the show, um, who obviously started with Ultrasonic. The, you're talking circa what, 92? I mean, I was only born in 1991, you know what I mean? I mean, I was born in 88, so what were you, what, one, I was three. I know, I know, I know, I know. Is, nah. But it still lives, it, that stuff still lives on the Of course route. it does. Um, but that shaped their generation in the early 90s, and then as you see, it evolved, and it evolves again. I just think that, I, I do think that there's, there is older generations that they look at that site and go, oh, that's a lot of shit, what, that, why could you even listen to that? Do you know what? It may not be your cup of tea, but to us, it was. We done it. Was it. Everybody does it. Like so. See, see, in the when when it started to change, right, and moving away from hard trance, right, and vocal trance and prog trance and all the rest of it, right, into hard styles, right. I liked a wee bit of hard styles, but my mates were like fucking climax, final count, and all that count. Oh, they loved all that, but I, I was like, mm, not too, like, I'm not too fond of it. And then after that, it was like EDM. And music started to change, and we we were we become the older ones. So we're like, oh no, that's not the real. That's not a good stuff. I don't know. I think it I, not, I mean. Maybe it is. Maybe we are. Maybe we do start to think about things in another way, and we go and we we, are, we seem to think we are the same as what they were in the, the ones that were growing up in ninety two and ninety three when the happy hardcore kind of evolved for the hacienda at the time and the house exactly. music and the different guests and the beginning of ecstasy and all that and the, a new landscape. No, I mean, and we, they were taking that then. It was proper ecstasy. Do you know what I mean? They were, I they were taking stuff that okay, well, it was illegal, but at least they knew. What they were taking, and it was all just one big loving. I always go back to the dry up, right? About 2004, 2005, and you just could not get hash, man. They just stopped importing hash, do you know what I mean? You used to get right good hash, and then you just couldn't get it. And then we went a full summer, and you just couldn't get it for love nor money, you know what I mean? And then cunts just started getting flooded with pills. Pills were everywhere, you know what I mean? Well, you, and then that was that. It was two pounds. I know that's that. It was, mate. So, there. see that full summer, 2005, we were out of nut every single day, mate. Do you know what I mean? We were selling sweaters all summer, you know what I mean? Just going nuts. And they just, they were like Smarties, they were everywhere. Two pound, right. pocket money pricing. Do you know what I mean? Because right, at that point, we were, so, we were selling them for three for a tenner and whatever, they, whatever else. And we were paying like 25, 30 and, for one. And pound. the older ones, right? Yeah. They were in their 30s maybe back then, right? When we were only in teens, when we were like 15, they were like, oh, I don't know about the new things, man. We used to pay like 20 quid for a pill and they would take, like Mickey McGonagall, and he was saying, oh, we'd take half a pill. And do you know what I mean? And three and four pills. And I'm thinking, fucking, we were taking about 20 of them. No, I mean, and they were probably having the same impact after 20 as what they were having for, for half a pill. Just different. 10, 15 years it changed. Before. Drugs landscape continually changes. No, I mean, then it went back to Monday and that after that, and then everybody's taking prop. Right. And the way people take drugs and, and buy and sell drugs changes. No, I mean, so. Did you find yourself getting kind of locked 
into that drug scene at that point. Oh, you know, 100%. Mate. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like, the, wee, the wee wee took ecstasy was fucking outrageous. And I'm not kidding. Every, I, I mate, every single weekend, for, I was 13, I was 21, we would literally be out not the full duration. You know what I mean? The only time I wasn't was maybe when I was on holiday with my mom. Do you know what I mean? Because then, you couldn't take I, mate, you couldn't get them. I know, mate. And then you were back, you know what I mean? And then you're just out on that for a, for a decade, basically. You know what I mean? And did you find yourself, obviously, you were expelled from school? Like, if you, did you find yourself dogging school and just getting filled in? Aye, mate. I swear, honestly, I got to the stage where people sat out they're not in school, man. You turn, turn around somebody's out there not in it. They were right in the piss at it because yeah. basically children were getting classy drugs, you know what I mean? It was, it was nuts at the time. <laughs> You know what I mean? And obviously, mate, I had the heavy duty cannabis problems. You know what I mean? I was like 50 quid a day and green and all that and like how blues and all that. Big, big, big bottle of steel. You know what I mean? Um, my, old, my old grandma died, man, in a different, in, she lived in Canada and left us a couple of quid, man. So I had a few pounds, you know what I mean? And that, back, my mate was laughing about that the day, actually. And he's like, mate, you are never, you're, you had more money when you were a teenager than you did anyway. And I was laughing, no man. It's crazy to think, think that, especially as your granny dies and what do you do? You go and buy I know, I know, mate. And we were actually having a conversation. He's like, see if that was new, mate. You'd invested that in your career and your future, right? And he's like, do you know what? You get you get gave that money when you were a wee guy and you went absolutely bonkers. So we were, mate, we went we went nuts. But we so were drug addicts, you know what I mean? Definitely. So fantasy lands happens, changes everything for you. Uh, completely changes your full outlook and the whole landscape of what rave music was to you. Um, can you remember who was on that lineup? Oh fuck man. Um well the class of the Titans, it would have been more call you, mate. Like, you was there, mate. And the one the first person I recognised, because they were nostalgic nights, do you know what I mean? A lot of these people were coming back to Dara Hang after they'd done it originally. Like Charlie Lono, he's mental feel. Right, um, it was like bass generator and fucking like Rosala man was one of them and all right old ones that I'd never heard the right. But the first time I recognised a tune, right, and, and a and a DJ was Scott Brown, which is quite that was quite special to talk to him. Do you know what I mean? And say that because I had that moment, man. He's playing all easy, and I was like, wow, man, fucking, yeah, hell, I'm having a moment. I, I still that get fanboy moments. You know, DJ and gigs, and they're on the same lineup. I still get fanboy moments. We done um, we done the GBX 25th. Uh, Obviously, two years ago now, because I'm trying to think, for COVID, it's away, it's wasted. Um, two years ago, we done it at the SWG3 in Scott Brown, and uh, we were on the lineup. And you were, we were sitting in green rooms, and as I say, like, I'm here in Scott Brown, standing behind me, just talking away as if it was done. It's a brand and new I'm, guy, I'm man. I'm sitting there fangirling. Malorca, you man, man. Right? When I like when I seen him, I was like, fuck. Because the last time I'd seen him, I was at my scone and I fucking raved. Do you know what I mean? And like he was always a one, just the guy's energy and his madness that never kind of like peaked when he was young. It just kept going and like even though we were experiencing him in the second or third generation, do you know what I mean? Mate, it felt like no. That's why like some of the older ones when you looked down at us, I was like, boys, we were just then we were falling in your fine example. Do you know what I mean? I know. I think you still, I mean, I still find myself watching videos on YouTube. Ultrasonic that back in 92. And I think my energy still the same way it is now. Is I know, it, mate. What's, what's that now? Must be in his late 40s. Nearly 30 years ago. No, I mean, he, he played that Maxi Born Slippy and Joy Energizer, right? I, I think it was Colors 2010. And they had their own DMT t shirt on, man. He just started bouncing all the decks, no, I mean, going nuts. And I'm like, this guy's a fucking legend, you know what I mean? He's, he's I think, some energy, mate. I think the vibe, if, if the crowd can see the DJ vibing like that. I think it just adds to the whole experience you got in these events. 100%. Because I was trying to think to myself, I was driving up the motor earlier on, because I did, obviously I knew you'd spoke on the programme about, it was either, I didn't, couldn't remember if it was Fantasia or Fantasy Lands, one or two, and I was trying to think of my first rave that I went in, and I think it might have been Fantasy Lands at Bray Head, but it just said it was November, so it was like minus five, and there's people cutting about in the tinfoil. <laughs> It looked like a disaster. It was like a natural disaster after it went, it, man. I, I'm thinking to myself, like, how did, how did they get away with it? Like, let people out to fall in the morning and, and tinfoil the in fantasy, the street? Fantasy Lands was a hard one, by the way, because it was, the, you know what I mean? It was Highland, Lowland Hall and Ingolston, right? And there was no arena, there was no seats. It was like proper warehouse stuff. Right. And at the end of the night, you had curtains at the back, obviously, to block the light during, you know, as the sun went down at six o'clock, right? But, mate, it just filled up, man. You had rows of people sitting, just absolutely burst, pure rave casualties. And in the arena, man, it would just fill up, you know what I mean? And then all the other seats would be going. I can still see it in my head, you know what I mean? And but they are oofed in 66, it went, I know. It was. And then 66, you know what I mean? You'd be sitting fucking five or six in the morning, broken, you know what I mean? Took 15 swedgers, smoked 60 fags. Get back in the bus oh, thing to myself, my, 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 my life We just, to? we always obviously come to Edinburgh, right? And then we're coming here, Drew would drive by that Kirka shots, man. You just, like, oh, pure creeped out, you know what I mean? It's, it's one of the <laughs> you probably drive by that and you think, it's one of the, 
know my flip side is I'm nearly aim or I'm nearly just aim. creeped out, man. Just, just, you're, just, just, you're just creeped out, you know what I mean? And then we'd, we'd, sit, we'd go back to the gaff, man. And any time you read about a gaff, I'm writing about my mate's house, you know what I mean? And that was like the rave house, you know what I mean? Sat in the right time. That's where all the pills get to. So that's what showed you your mate had the, the, the place. The gaff, mate. Went. Aye, aye. He'd a council flat in, in Mavis, you know what I mean? He was a wind hall boy, you know what I mean? Fucking party animal, you know what I mean? Just, just, just carnage, mate. Aye, it was an it was an absolute madhouse. I wrote a piece last year called the Madhouse, you know what I mean? And did a wee film about it at the Edinburgh yeah. Festival, and that was it was just the memories for that house, basically, you know what I mean? Mm. Or distilled, and it's weird because we, I felt even though we were 14, 15, you were like oblivion chasing, you were sitting for three days, man, and not no food. No, I mean you would rock rock in on Monday and then I never somebody said to me, You never go to school on a Monday and I'm like, I'm not well, I'm not fit to go to school on a Monday. Monday club. I was and it was funny, right? Because I was sitting thinking to myself, I went to Cobra High and I was like, why do I always get the train, right? Because I used to when I walked out of school on a Monday, I was rough as toast, man, right? Because I'd been taking sweaters all weekend. And I would jump on the train, right, and then get the train up to Erdry, right? And walk to the bus stop and then I'd get the bus home. And I'm like, why did I do that? Such a convoluted way home when it's only three miles up the road. And it just dawned on me, I'm like, you were just too unwell, mate, if you walk up that four miles. You know, you just couldn't have made it, no, I mean. No, fuck that. If I done that four mile, I'd probably be worse than the Tuesday. You just wouldn't make it, mate. You're just passing a sweat, you know what I mean? It was brutal, man. So, I mean, after Fantasyland, can I, it's, I'm assuming at that point you didn't think to yourself, you had no aspirations to, to change your life. No, mate, that, I wasn't. To, to start thinking about books and taking this to a, a whole new other level. I'm sure there was a lot of years in between where you were still... 16 party, party, party. 16 was a funny age right because that, that was a pivotal moment right because we were, I was sitting with all these elder ones right but there was like peripheral people that you sat with and all right elder elder ones right and three of them died within a year of heroin over the, the elder ones were on the gear, on the kit mate right and um, three of them died and I had this experience right that I'd, we'd been out man and it all started with something pure stupid right a, an elder boy walked into the gaff, kicked a can of beer because he was steaming, right? And the can of beer had landed right in this, the fucking bag of Eckies, right? And so it, it back, turned it, every, it, it, it just turned the full thing to mash, right? And instead of throwing him away, right? My mate was like, just give 20 quid each, man. We'll just, we'll just take spoon fees of these. So we're sitting with these cups of water, teaspoon and fucking this Eckie mash into it, right? At least I remember him stirring this wind, you know what I mean? Actually, just call like, a Mate, we're just like, guzzle, guzzle, guzzle. And these old boys come in, right? And they're like, one hot, right? And next thing I knew, I woke up, man, it's like two days later, right? It was fucked, right? Absolutely fried out my nut. And fucking a boy overdosed, mate, in the flat in front of me, right? And fucking he took went into the room and took fair on, mate, you know what I mean? And literally, mate, the guy was dying right in front of me. And his pals were not the phone an ambulance, right? So I was like, fuck, the boy's got to die, you know what I mean? I'm on the phone to the ambulance, right? Paramedics, da, 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 da. And then boom, boom, boom. The phone went dead. One of them had pulled the phone cord out of the wall. Well, and they let their mate die, you know what I mean? Just because he did me one. I mate, terrified of the stigma, mate, uh, the stigma that, that they faced, right? And they were terrified of being in the advertiser and getting the name of a hire a junkie, you know what I mean? So, terrified, right? And then I couldn't get that out of my head, mate, because, like, they were willing to let their mate die, right? It did, I got an ambulance, mate, and he lived, right? But honestly, within two years, right? Sorry, within the year, right? The boy who pulled the phone cord died. The boy I saved died. And then one of our army mates died, right? Within a year. Within a year, mate, aye. All three of them, aye, heroin, mate, right? And I was just sitting thinking, fuck it, pure depressed about it, you know what I mean? And I'm thinking, mate, I'm not a heroin user, right? But see if that was me, I'd overdose and pills or something. Maybe yeah. would have phoned an ambulance. No, you know what I'm especially, saying? Especially it's frightening. Especially when you're talking as if you don't, you didn't want that stigma. No, mate. So if they don't want that stigma, fuck. how are you going to survive? Yeah, I was just sitting thinking, man, pfft. What a miserable fucking situation this is. And this was kind of beyond the young team fun and all that. It wasn't really fun anymore, mate. It was, it I mean, was the, the young team became serious then. And it, it was. It wasn't. To be honest, I wasn't even really fucking running about with the young team, man. I was sitting with the older ones and they were already on the, the trajectory towards disaster, mate. Yeah. No, I mean, and a lot of the people we would sit with in that house wouldn't have made it, mate. No, I mean, they, they didn't make it, mate. They're all dead. They're all dead, mate. Aye. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it was kind of a darker shade. And I had went through the, the colour and the madness and the fighting the, or the young team stuff. And then I'm sitting in like Dawson. He's with heroin addicts, basically, right? So it was quite serious, you know what I mean? It's quite refreshing, though, that you, that, you know, you, you can talk so openly about, as you say, sit, basically sitting in a door house. It was, it yeah, was, it was people mate. sitting But this was just like your feet. Oh, i never seen it. it, it mate, that was, they were still keep that well on the down low because of the young team stuff, right? They would never show us any of that, but it was on, it was clandestine, you know what I mean? They were away doing it, of course, they were ashamed about it, you know what I mean? But it was there. And that was, that was because the party, mate, I was like, when you've been out for three days, you'll sit anywhere. Do you know what I mean? It was well, like you know, you, gaff hunting. You were out for. You're in such a you're in such a, 
Days that you don't even know if it's New Year or New York, so you, it I mean, was. you would sit wherever. And then 16, right, obviously we've got a choice, you know what I mean? They leave school up, they stay on, right? And because the economic recession was starting to happen, right, the teachers said basically, don't leave school, right, if you've not got a job, right? You'll not be able to sign on, right? You'll not get money, right? Just stay on, right? So I went, fuck it then, right? But I'd already been applying for a few jobs, like I applied for BT Internet, like one of the guys that does the green boxes, not uh, a, yeah, yeah. a few things, right? And it was funny because my first class, right, English, the lassie sitting next to me said, have you ever read Train Spotting? Because we had to pick a book and write an essay about it, right? And I was like, no, man, I fuck, this is one of my favourite films. I didn't even know what it was about, you know what I mean? And they go, you know what I mean? 16. <laughs> It's a thing you think to yourself about Just don't hear about books. Just don't hear about it. Right. And then that see that conversation, it changed my life forever, right? Because fucking I tell my, my lassie pal that and she she went and bought me the book, right? It was kindly, do you know what I mean? And once I read that, mate, it was like reading my own life because all these overdoses and all the shite, do you know what I mean? My abs and a heroin user, you know what I mean? Never. But it, it felt it touched a chord, it struck a chord with me, do you know what I mean? And I was like, ah, fuck. Even books about fucking, you know, heroin users and dafties and fucking that, that mattered. So it mattered to me, mate. Do you know what I mean? And do you know what? Like, I used to kick about at that time saying, don't care about my life, don't care about nothing, don't care about my future. And for once, I cared about something, mate. Do you know what I mean? I cared about that book, you know what I mean? And so I was like, I just went for that, right? And then everybody said, I'm going to go to uni because you'll be all the fucking quiet cunts, you know what I mean? And all the young team ones had left. Right, so I'm just sitting in this fucking class and I just started copying him saying, fuck, I'll go to uni, you know what I mean? I'll, I'll, I'll study English, I'll read my books. And then, obviously, that was made with healthy scepticism. You know what I mean? Do you think, you know, did you think at that point you got yourself into a rut just before, like, obviously you had the conversation about the, about the trade spotting book and that really kind of turned things for you? Do you 100%. think you got yourself into a, a, a rut where you actually mate. thought to yourself, I, I might not get out of that? Aye, 100%. Mate, I had no hope, mate, honestly. I, I can remember just sitting thinking, they fucking shaped my life, son, man. The way I took drugs and drank, right? And, like, just the, the peripheral violence and all, do you know what I mean? Like, I got a proper bad fucking hiding that year, so I did, man. Get bottled up at five times and all that, just in the wrong place, wrong time. Aye, mate, wrong, wrong, wrong time, wrong place, wrong time sort of thing, you know what I mean? But it was a bit of a wake-up call, you know what I mean? With all that. And then I had this book, and then, to be honest with you, the way I was treated after teachers and all that, right, that kind of, it was like the opposite of inspiration, mate. It was like, um, they disencouraged me, do you know what I mean, to do that? And they were saying, no, you'll never do that. And, mate, I'm quite a stubborn guy, you know what I mean? So, it was... Do you think they were doing reverse psychology? No, mate. No, mate. Do you think they were just being... Aye, mate, they just, they just couldn't see my value, do you know what I mean? There was no value. I was one... You I was, thought like, to yourself, I was, I was just a waste of space, another, mate. Another I just a waste of space. I shouldn't have stayed on, do you know what I mean? Like, I was diverting teachers' attention away from people who should stay. And, mate, seeing fifth year, I was fucking still... I, I was, think I was one of the only people ever to get suspended in fifth year, do you know what I mean? You, you normally just get, there's the door, you know what I mean? See you later, and I guess, I guess fucking sussed for, fuck knows what, man, drinking school, I think it was. We just, mate, I was always just going and getting carried at this, man. Still in fifth year, so I, you were 16, 16. I, I was hanging about with the young bar G ones, for, like, all the lying one with boys that I hung about with, but we were all right with the bar G ones at school, so I just hung about with them, man. They would all just all get and smoke green, fucking, as you do, you know what I mean? So what kind of, what, what year would you have been? What year would Fifth year, so I was 16. So that was all this, all this other stuff was happening while I was still at school, do you know what I mean? So it wasn't like the fucking, you know, the way other people were living. It was a very strange life. So if you, know you, I mean? if you were 16, like, you kind of like in 2006 to kind of 2007. 2007, 2007 yeah. aye, mate. So they, my English exam, right, got to the end of the year and I'd done quite well, right, and I'd stuck in and all that. And then my English exam was fucking the day after Rangers were in fucking uh, the UEFA Cup final, mate. So needless to say, I went out and got fucking legless, you know what I mean? I, um, um, I sort of remember my I first I never went, mate. Don't. Most of my pals went, you know what I mean? But one of them didn't go. And I sat with him and got fucking steaming, obviously. And then I went in the next day and I fucked it, mate. I failed it, you know what I mean? So, and then all the teachers that said, you'll know that, you know what I mean? Laughing at us, they were just like, even me laughing at you, do you know what I mean? Tell you. And I was just, I was gutted, mate. Right? Because I'd chosen, you know, you take a bit of stick first day on at school and try to do all that, you know, man, do you know what I mean? It's like, it was like the opposite, mate. It was, that had the stigma, being the brainy guy had the I mean, stigma, you know what I mean? I remember slagging my pal. We're still in school in fifth and sixth year, and you were going, but you still in school in I was just lucky because one of the Langone lassies, right, that we hung about with the weekends, right, and she was the birthday one of the top guys down there, it was one of my good pals, she stayed on, so I just hung about with her and one of our guys, so the freeze kicked her out and we were, you know what I mean, but it was weird, it was like the whole social spot was happening, you know what I mean, and then six year, mate, I was on my own, basically, you know what I mean, we just stay so young, Barb G ones, aye, mate, the Barb G 
boys stayed on for fifth year. Exactly the same story. So we were just dogging it and fucking still fucking about, you know what I mean? But towards the end of that, I was like, right, man, I can't feel this time, right? So I was fucking hitting the books and that. Even though I was going to raves and living, still living the madness. But I think because I'd started doing all that, I'd pulled away. I wasn't sitting in fucking Dodd's so I was got, still, still getting mad with it, you know what I mean? Having your, having your social aspect. Having your educational aspect? Well, I think I was trying to try do both. Uh, try to do both at the same time, you know what I mean? Try to have a double life, you know what I mean? Living, still, still going in fucking passion ass sweat, man. Monday, Tuesday, because you've been out taking fucking gear. Because you've been out for Thursday night. Gone nuts, you know what I mean? And obviously, you were, a, you were different. You were an anomaly, you know what I mean? I had a full bar now, a teacher saw that, and he, I was fucking shouting and fucking swearing right in his face and all that. And I walked, and I walked out of school and I was like, oh, I've fucked that, man. I'm, I'm expelled. Bastard, and I phoned my mom. And I was like, Here, I've had, I've just fucking lost my temper. I teach her, I'm like, I fucked it, right? And I'm like, You need to get down to school pronto, right? And try and smooth us out for us, please. And she went, Because I cared, I did care at that time, and that's quite rare, right? It was, and, and teachers don't think you care, but deep down in your fuck, I mean, I just, I was, I didn't, I didn't want to get beaten, know what I mean? But like, they beat me, mate, and that way, you know, they told me I was a piece of shit, and then I proved it by fucking up, know what I mean? That's how I felt, know what I mean? Low value, mate, know what I mean? You're, you're sitting, think to yourself, well, you've got, you've got this opinion. Hundred percent. I mean, I'm like, I need to prove him wrong, right? And then fucking, but my head teacher, right? He was like Coach Carter, mate. Right? He got it, right? He he cared about the young team boys, right? And fucking, he wanted me to do well. And I know, I know, he was pulling strings, mate, to keep me in school. Can I should have been punted for my behaviour because well, I was out of control. I was fucking wild. Three times or so. Oh fuck, mate! Five for the first school, then expelled, then fucking uh, two for the next one. And I only, four, man, I know, four, I, four, I, four I know, I know, no, I know, mate, I know, mate. I was, I was a wee fan, you know what I mean? And I was six foot two, right? I'd have a peak on. Fucking, you could spot me a mile away. I got away with nothing. You know what I mean? Just, just bomb central daily. Oh, drugs, mate. I was, it was a bad. I was that bad with drugs and drink. Do you know what I mean? Always. Plus, obviously, I actually managed to get through the full three years in Cobridge High without one square go in school. Aye, Aye mate. It was serious violence at left school, but no, never. And I think cunts were a wee bit cautious of me, mate, because they never really knew. You know what I mean? I was like a big cunt that came fair to and like at the beginning, I was trying to avoid violence and try so to pull back a wee bit. I don't think they were, I think they were fucking just healthfully cautious, mate, about yeah. me, do you know what I mean? And because I joined, because I was safety numbers with the Langone ones, do you know what I mean? And they were the most hated and rated, mate, you know what I mean? Yeah, the outside of the thought, we don't really know too much about us, boys. So I, I think just it just stayed back, away, stayed back, aye, man. Yeah. And uh, just when, it was like cowboys and Indians, you know what I mean? We were a young team stuff. A lot of it, but, mate, see a lot of the serious violence that happens when you fucking, it's not fucking like two armies clashing. Aye. It's when you fucking walk, you're walking down the road with your bird and you bang into the fucking four guys you bumped. It's not fucking, I, isn't it, mate? It's not like that. And that's why, like, in the young team, there's only really one or two pitched battles. It's more like you get sneaky daft cunts, right? You end up fucking getting bottled daft cunts when fuck, you know what I mean? That was like that. And then fucking. So at that point, I know you were saying you were still kind of, you, you had that social aspect and the, your educational side. So during your social aspect, <laughs> Were you finding yourself like coming out of the lights at your drink over as you get into it? Mm. You maybe going to the lights at Archaeos. No, mate. No, mate. I was kind of too young for that. Aye. Mm. I was quite a like centre point mega bar and all that. Right, okay. So Atlantic are discos, you know what I mean? Fucking. I hate me, aye, 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 aye. But again, end up rolling a bit, man. In there, you know what I mean? No, I, and I think mega bar was it. It was mental, sir. So. And I thought the night it was like two for one, so like, people are just getting in and getting absolutely. Uh, like, the place was on. nuts, man. Right, and centre point and all that, right? But I think I was in such a shape, mate, back then that I just, I, I kind of went, I started going to the dancings with this bird I was going with. She was elder, right? And I was like, oh, fuck all that dancing shit, man. I'm like, we just sat in the fucking crazy gaff, man, and take pills, you know what I mean? Like, that was what we lived for, you know what I mean? And then the raves, you know what I mean? So, like, I was like, whenever I went to a club, I was like, is this it? Right? So, was it not really the music aspect? Was the music, it, mate, it, fuck, but the music just, died, you know what I mean? Just a, was it merely the aspect of... Like, I, I, no, I mean, just getting full, you know what I mean? But then I think it was like when you contrast the clubs, right? So they were starting to play all the disco stuff, right? And it was all the soft tunes, right? And I was like, ah, fucking, what kind of music? So I don't know how to dance to all this music. And it was about pulling birds and looking minted and all that. And see, back then, mate, I was fucking upside down. Because I was like, I was actually, I was going through my, my, my mind earlier on before, because I was talking about how it's changed dramatically for when I was 15, 16, the 15, 16 year olds knew that I was floating about the town. And I'm thinking to myself, if we were getting in and buying £100 <laughs> a grey goose, we'd be getting slapped. I know. Fuck me. We'll put it this way, right? 
if you had a hundred, if you had a thousand pound phone in your pocket, right? I would have took that phone straight into cash generators, sold it, bought myself a fucking two pound Lycra mobile, five or Lycra out of Tesco, spent the other nine hundred and ninety-five pound in drugs. Well, that's the way we lived, right? And like, I would, I wouldn't say I was a fashionable wee guy at all, mate. I was kicking about in trackies, wearing a mera peak, right? Even though I was fucking nineteen, eighteen, and then. Like at the end of the school thing, man, right? I managed to pass my exams, mate. It was a miracle, right? It was a miracle, mate. I, pan- I managed to scrape into university, right? And again, man, the family were like, oh, I've done brilliant and all that. That's the end of the story. Mate, you can't just give somebody a fucking student loan, right? And put them in a fucking place where everybody's getting far a drink and expect them to do well. No, that's it, mate. I just continued the young team life, you know what I mean? I know you're saying that, but it, you, you, it was a miracle, but actually in your name do you believe it was a miracle or do you think to yourself do you know what I was clever enough to do that both people it was other people that told me I wasn't good enough I think so um, really was it I think the life I was living at the time right a lot of people didn't come back for that life right and a lot of people who are sitting there didn't make it right and just because you're clever mate and you can read books doesn't mean that you're going to make it alive you know what I mean and I think I was lucky at that time because I was fucking just I don't know why I think I, honestly when I look back right I think it was because my dad died when I was a wee boy I think, I think it's that, mate, that changes you, right? They call it adverse childhood experience, right? Ace, they know all about it now, right? And I think that's why I stayed out all weekend, right? That's why when my pals went home, right, I didn't, I didn't want to go home, right? I just wanted to push and push and push and I never took my foot off the gas. And I think it was that, mate, you know what I mean? An unresolved trauma for that, you know, and growing up with that dad and I always try to look up to the older ones. You were looking for a father figure, mate. You know I mean? to be the father figure. It sounds like a cliche, it sounds like a fucking American hood movie or something, but it's true, you know what I mean? You kind of do do that. Meeting the, meet the, meet the, the guy on the stairs, the like, boys in the hood or something like that. And exactly, the old IOG, you know what I mean? Mate, the old ones, but it was, they were, you know what I mean? Like, my, mate, the, first, the guy who took me for a, my pint, my first pint, when I, when I turned 18, was my best mate. He was two year old on me. He was like the fucking big brother I never had, you know what I mean? So it was like that, you know what I mean? But um, I mate, so I, I scraped in, I ended up hanging about with a boy for Knightswood and he was in young teams and all that. So just the exact very same as me, you know what I mean? We lived. Knightswood, drum chat, all in that way, that was well, so he will, he, he, he'll, he'll know. He'd been stabbed and all that, you know what I mean? So like, we just, we were just two fannies, right? Two dafties for schemes, right? And then we just fucking kept going, man. We fucking running about selling green, running about fucking, you know what I mean? And my drug addiction just spiralled, mate, you know what I mean? And, oh, 100%, you know what I mean? That's when I was taking boys every day, you know what I mean? Taking boys to sleep, still getting full of gear and all that at the weekend. And it was bad at that time. Is that still when you were... Aye, mate, aye, aye, mate, aye. And then when... Moving through, you know, me, I was only a student by name only. I was a student because I turned up to the minimum amount of classes not to get fucked out uni, right? But the rest of the time, I was just a brew boy that just sat and did nothing. I lived, sat with all the boys that were on the brew, right? I lived that life. Sat with guys that were pawning their PlayStations, you know what I mean? And it was like a fucking, like the art of it. mate, that's the life we were living, do you know what I mean? That's how bad I was with drugs. Like, so people don't realise. Did it get it to a certain point you and you thought to yourself, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to end up. But mate, hundred percent, and I've told this story a million times, mate. It was Christmas Eve, two thousand twelve, right? That was it, mate. That was rock bottom, hot crisis point. You know what I mean? Genuinely, I didn't think I could go on, mate. I was, I mate, rock bottom, mate. That's it. Alcoholics talk about that moment of clarity or that, and that was mine, mate. And I just, I realised, mate, that I had to stop right there and then, man. And it was a, it was a funny one, mate, right? because. My ma, my ma is quite religious, right? She used to go to church now, right? And fucking Christmas Eve, obviously, I, I never went there, right? Not sure. night, right? I prayed, mate. I had nobody else to, you know what I mean? I prayed to God, I genuinely, man. I prayed to God, bro. No, mate. Never fucking thought about it before. I was in despair, mate, in crisis, and that's where drugs eventually lead you. And I know, I know, like, all the boys I know that have killed herself, I'm sure that's exactly where they got to, and they didn't make it, you know what I mean? But, mate, that was not my story, you know what I mean? I'm lucky for what happened, you know what I mean? I prayed, and I was like, right. And I was, I, and I got up, man, and I was like, because I was greeting and all that, I was in some shape, mate, you know what I mean? My mental health was fried, you know what I mean? And I went away down, sitting with a young team, and they're fucking doing what they're doing, taking drugs and all that, and I'm like, man, I need to go troops, fuck this, I'm away, man. Mm-hmm. Right? And one of them, do you know what was funny, right? One of them, and my way out, he's like, where are you going, church or something? And I was laughing, and I went like, do you know what, fuck it, I'm all right, fuck it. Go to church, right? And I went up the road. My wee ma's getting all ready, man, putting her nice clothes and all that on for Christmas, right? Absolutely. And I says to her, I'm, and she was surprised to see me, you know what I mean? And I says, aye, she's man. Christmas. She's she's like, Christmas what's he doing? I know, I 100%, you know what I mean? She's like, fuck, she was surprised. And I was like, I'll come with you tonight, you know what I mean? And I was walking out of the church, right? You know what it's like, man, eating men's pies and all that, and you drink me coffees and all that, Merry Christmas, you know what I mean? Da, da, da. And then walking out, and I says to her, I promise you, right? Something's changed, I'm a different guy, right? And mate, she turned it all before, right? 
fucking, you know what it's like, right? Drug addicts, def, very difficult to have, right? Always thieving, right? You always want to change. And I tried, mate, I'd, I'd got to maybe three months off it, right? And I was doing well and all that, and I'd go straight back, and I would be right into boys again. I was a drug addict, mate. I'm not embarrassed to say it, I was. I th- as right? I said, I, I, obviously I touched on this earlier, and I was saying it, it's quite refreshing for you to be as old and to talk about it, because I don't really think a lot of people really know how, when people say you, you're a drug addict, it must be easy to come off it. Well, how do, how do you when you say you're a drug addict, people think you're a heroin addict, but you can be a drug addict without fucking, you can be a cocaine addict, do you know what I mean? And being big debt and big trouble, you know what I mean? And, but I don't think they quite grasp about how easy it is to become an addict if they don't have an addictive Especially when you've had trauma in your life, like a death, like fucking, if they don't have an addictive you know what I mean? attitude, how do they know how easy or difficult it is for you to? to to come off what you're in, whether it be, as you say, drugs, gambling, alcohol, whatever it is. Anything, man. You could be addicted to it. It was a nightmare. It was a fucking nightmare, right? And I, I looked my mum in the face, right? And, mate, when your mum doesn't believe you, right? When you've had a fucking spiritual awakening, right? Sorry. It was a Saurian, right? And she looked tired, mate. And she's like, oh, that's good, I'm glad, right? But she looked tired. Mate, I never took drugs again, right? And I swear to God, see if you ask my mum, she'd tell you it's a Christmas miracle. She's like, I, I truly believe you found God that night and something happened to you, right? And, and I've told the story. Do you know what it was? I don't know, mate. I think, I don't know, maybe, maybe you're praying fucking the big man heard me or something. I think that's true, something right? Just, I think that's true. Just, I think I changed, mate. And I, that time, see, before then, I couldn't do it. I never done it, right? My faith's remained. You know what I mean, I just, I've got that belief now and I just didn't feel alone, mate. You know what I mean, I always felt alone, bro, and I always felt like I was always suffering on my own and I didn't feel alone anymore. So it was a good thing. It's a good thing, mate. It's mad for somebody to say that and you think, and you ask them what changed in your body, I don't know. But whatever it was, it's, it has worked. It's profound. It is, mate. It's, 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 it was a big change, man. It was like everything changed, you know what I mean? I just felt like a different guy, you know what I mean? And then I had purpose, you know what I mean? And like, you know what it's like, man. You're trying to get our things right. And the first couple of weeks is a fucking hard, mate. Because all your pals are phoning you like, like I got fucking on it and all that. And I'm like, mate, I need to know, right? I'm like, fuck off. And I remember I was staying up until I got there, man. And that's wee flat, right? And I was fucking pacing up and down, so I had to pull my hair out, right? And try to stay back for every cunt. Because if I went back, man, that was me. I knew I was finished that time, right? I was, I had it, man. The next time you, that's that, mate. I'm not coming back. The next conversation you might be having with me, Undertaker. Nah, mate, hundred percent, hundred percent. That was that bad. She knew it. Right, and fucking, so I was pacing about, right, and I started playing the blame game, right, as we do, mate, right, we started it's pointing fingers, fault. right, it's teacher's fault, it's yeah. Polo's fault, it's my mum's fault, it's right, it's my dad's fault for dying, it's, and then I look in the mirror and I'm like, there's nobody left to blame, mate, there's nobody left to blame, I had to face up and be a man and take the responsibility, right, and it was me who had led myself to this fucking hellish life, right, and this lonely life, you know what I mean, and I was like, I need to do something, right, and I was like, and I don't know why, man. I just thought about Sweet Sixteen. I'm like, I'm going to do a fucking movie or something. <laughs> and I was like, get the laptop, put man. I'm like, right. Always fancied yourself as pinball. Or I, I, mate, I don't know. I don't know, right? I just, I was, I don't know why I jumped to that, right? I probably think about train spotting and all that, right? And I swear to God, I kid you not, right? I got the laptop out and I sat and stared at it, right? And I was like, the first three words I typed was a young team. And I just wrote, I just wrote that young team because that's, that's what we were, mate. That's, that's why you. that was the entry point to all this life and the misery and all that. And that, that moment, right, when my life changed and everything's different. And people sometimes ask me and say, yeah, mate, what's different and all that? I can't tell you, right? Because you don't know. I don't know, right? It was, it was that moment for me. It was rock bottom and, and it was either trial, it was, it was either fucking, you seen the light or you were gone, mate. So Aye, I, you've either seen the light or you've never seen the light again. 100%. That's so what it was like, though. Did you still have to go at uni when you... Mate, I was in, I was in my fourth year, right? I'd fucking absolute miracle. I'd scraped through, right? To, and I was in fourth year now, right? And see, when you say that, people go, like, "You must not have been that bad." So I'm like, "Trust me." I mean, I mean, just like me, and I mean it. It was literally me and that other boy that I'd met pulling each other English, English mate. Right. He was doing sports, but we were pulling each other through with the fucking ears, right? And he ended up dropping out, and he went back. But I stayed on, mate, and I just kept going and going and going, right? And it got to the end, right? I had no idea what I was doing, right? I was fucking, but like, see, and see that year, right? Honours year, went down to a gaff near there, right? Like this bird, fucking went down. Fucking rival young team comes in. One of your mates fucking stabbed my, uh, fucking bolt my bra, right? Within five minutes, man, right? Fucking rolling about with cunts, right? Fucking had to bolt a boy, got stabbed in the back, right? And that was it, mate, right? That was me just before that, all the Christmas stuff, right? That was like October or something, right? So it was, it was so the, worst, the worst violence I'd ever, before. the worst violence I ever experienced, right. right? Getting stabbed with a broken bottle was fucking when I was doing honours here at fucking uni. You know what I mean? So when it was a double life, you know what I'm saying? But I, mate, after that, right? And I was like, so I sat 
And I was like, I'm doing this, fuck it, right? And I started writing down wee memories and writing down wee moments and writing about Eckies and all that. And then within three months, mate, I had 80,000 words and the young team was born. You know what I mean? Look, you look at it and you go... It was born. Like Frankenstein or something, you know what I mean? I've it was. I've just wrote a book in my life. It is. I just... I've, I've, wrote, wrote, I've, wrote, I've, wrote, I've actually wrote a book, you know what I mean? I've, I've fucking done this. And it, mate, it was fucking some mess, obviously, right? That, right. And the first third of the young team, right, when they were young, that is what it was, right? So it was... For age 14 to 15, right? And I'm like, but that's only the start of the story, right? So I was like, but I used that for my uni, my final exam, right? And I submitted the young team and I got a fucking 1B for it, right? And the, the teacher at the time. So this actually started as a, a university? Aye, 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 mate. Right, okay. Pretty much, aye. And then they were like, ah, this is publishable, right? This is a, you could do this as a real book, man. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Alright, you know what I mean? Sure, sure, sure. I know that I just didn't need an idea, no, I mean. Didn't have any idea. Right. And I was like, fuck's sake, man, that's mental. And she's like, we're doing a master's degree programme, right? For creative writing. We've just started it this year. Do you you're interested? And I'm like, a fucking master's degree now. And I was like, why not? Fuck it. I signed me up, no, I mean, yeah, come back, right? And fucking I had to say to my mom, I'm like, ah, there's no funding available, right? And they've asked me to come back, right? And she's like, How much is it? And she's like, How much is it? And she's like, she's like, I'm like, five grand. And she's like, five grand. And she's like, I'll pay it for you to keep you away from here, right? Because of all you've done, because now you're a year after drugs. That was a huge milestone for me, mate. You know I mean, I was still boozing, right? I was still boozing there, but there was no class A's, right? There was no green, no boys, right? No drugs at all, right? So obviously I was still drinking. But see at that time, mate, my wife transformed. I was fit, right? I was healthy, I was happy, right? Everything was going good, right? And I was working hard on this, right? Because I'd started now book two with Red Beery Young Team, right? So for ages fucking 18, right, to 19, right? And obviously that's when I was like that, right? Because I'd been dealing with heavy bad mental health and that was a bit when I'm like, right, there's no point making this just a story about fucking wee boys fighting. You need to actually dig in, man, and do the hard work. Do the, do the... You've, you've got to expand on it and let people know the 14, the 14 to 15 year olds that's just the start how slippery the slope can be 100% you get to that point where 18, 19 you've got, as you said you've got horrible mental health and then I did fucking chemical and happiness right and then I did the dark leaves I'm in because my granny died when I was 18 right and I was dead dead close to her right and you can feel that in the book the sorrow right? and the, the sadness and right and like feeling lost and all that and that, that's there right it was my granny that died at the time so I was dealing with all that man it was just like compound trauma you know what I mean on tap and tap and tap so you can feel it in the book right and I was dealing with all that and trying to process it so I thought pff, fuck anytime I had to run through and edit it man when I had to do the two chapters it was like pure emotional labour you know what I mean uh, you, like you, staring you, into you, the worst time you of your life and all that every time you were reading it 100% but I, I also realised that that was the most valuable writing in the book because it's about bit that truly connects with people that's about bit that can save lives that's about when a guy's sitting like what the fuck's happening to me and I felt like that when I started taking panic attacks right and anxiety and all that you've, you've not got a clue did you think it, did, was there times when you thought I've had enough and... No, mate. I, I think, to be honest with you, what, what stopped me from feeling like that was faith, mate. You know what I mean? And that belief, you know what I mean? And that's something like, you're something bigger or something more, right? I always just felt, mate, I was on a mission. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, you used to say on a fucking mission and all that. I felt like at that point I was on a mission, One bro. of the most famous acapellas was the, I know. For the PC DJ, DJ Tunes. Um, I felt I was on a mission, mate. I still feel that. That's what gets me up, mate. That's what keeps me going, you know what I mean? And it, it got me through all that, right? And like when I'd started that, right? So I did my master's, right? And they'd said, right, brilliant. I done all right, right? And my master's, I passed and all that, right? And I got to the end of it and I was like, brilliant, what now? Right? Nothing, right? So I went and started. I was obviously now, what, 23, 24, right? So all my pals are earning money and all that, right? And I'm like, I need to earn money, right? So I went in. You're getting masters again, you're still skin. Aye, basically, man. So fucking, like, I was working retail at the time and I was like, right, man, I need to get some dough right together, man. So I started selling cars, right? And obviously heavy stressful, right? Fucking working six days a week. Working seven days a week because my seventh day and at night I was doing my book, right? Aye. So I worked like a fucking Trojan, mate, right? And I made myself no well with that. And I went down to 12 stone. Right, and I'm a big guy, right? So I was like, wow, man, I was a whippet, right? And I was, I was quite no well at the time, mentally and physically, you know what I mean? So, so it was, it was quite visible. I, I, 100%, right? Because I was just on this mission, and I was, you know, I was thinking about it the other day, right? Mate, us, now we're in, we're four or five years in now, right? In the book, and me try to send this thing out, and I've been sending it out, right? And getting told, no, 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 right? We don't want it in Scots dialect, we don't want it in artery and spot, and we don't want this, we don't want that. Getting rejected all the time. And my mom was like, she sat me down and she's like, you've done well, right? You have done well, nobody can deny it, right? You've changed their life, right? You're off drugs. You're, you've, you've left all that behind you. But maybe it's time to put all this to bed. And I was like, no, I can't. I can't. I've come too far. Right? I can't get up. 
you I've come too far. I've come too far. I won't stop. You know what I mean? Nobody else is telling me that. This isn't how this, this She's like, you need a plan B, right, in case this doesn't work. And I'm like, there isn't a plan B, it needs to work. Plan B's made plan A work. I had to. Right. I had to, mate. Right, it was, I was on a mission, I was on my mission, you know what I mean? And fucking seven years on, right? Seven years, bro. It's a fucking sentence, right? It's a slog. It's a heavy slog, yeah. mate. I was doing London, uh, was I doing London at the time? Right, I was just about to move to London, right? And fucking I got a message. Boys just started an agency, right? I was just fucking carpet bombing cunts, mate, sending it everywhere. I was like, I would send it to every cunt, any cunt who would had an email online, I sent it to them. Any and publisher, I cunts were like, oh, Graham, fucking, it's still on all this year. And I'm like, fucking see you again next year, you cunt. I mean, I was, I was that determined. I was just like, I don't boy. care, I just need a brass neck. I'm, I'm banging doors, right? And a boy eventually said, <laughs> I think, this, I think this might go the whole distance this one by the way so I met him and all that and then he was like I'm not he's like it's a bit long right because it was a, it was almost double what you're reading there it was massive right Lord of the Rings of the fucking young teams know what I mean it was huge <laughs> you got it to get, a, you get a franchise out of this I know I know was the voice he was like have a wee have a thing right see what you can do and I'm like fuck that right this is it I took I phoned my work and I says can I come in right and I took four days and I worked night and day, right? And I cut 50,000 words, right? Like it was like surgery, you know what I mean? And I took it out and I went back to the boy and I said, I've done what you asked, that's it done. And he's like, wow. He's like, and signed me immediately because he just seen the effort, you know what I mean? So that was it, the book was signed? That was it, the book was signed, right? So that's you just getting an agent, right? But then you need to still need to get a publisher. That's just to get representation, you know what I mean? And then, mate, it was another six months and by the time of that, I'd moved to London. Right, so my bird had moved in there, right, for work. So I'd moved, I'd followed her down, right, and I was living down there and I was stressed at my mind, mate. My mental health was in some shape, right? I was fucking taking panic attacks in the tube and all that. And it was, it was really bad because I was very stressed, was there, mate. Was there ever a point then when you thought to yourself, I can go back to the way I was, just the way you were feeling? <laughs> I think, to be honest with you, I just didn't think I could go on, mate. I, was, I phoned my mom one night right. and I'm like, fuck, this is fucking, I can't make it down here, right? I've come down to the big smoke man chasing a dream and all that, and I'm like, I can't, but mate, to come back was failure, right? And I, and I knew that, right? And it was funny because, and I, I do believe, remember Football Factory when you seen the signs and all that? I, mate, I started feeling my wee bit like that, right? And I'm sitting on the train one day, right? And my heart's racing because I just, I just, I couldn't bear them, mate, they stinking tubes, right? And I was sitting, man, and I looks up and there's a wee fucking poster and it says, before the triumph of trial, and I laughed, right? And I'm like, ah, fuck, that's for you, man. This is your life's a trial right now, but you will get the triumph. And then fucking, a month later, mate, Picador, fucking one of the biggest publishers in the world, signed the young team. And I was like, wow. So what year would that have been then? 2018. Right, so that's us, man. Seven years in, you know what I mean? Then I've got another year, right? Another year of editing, right? So I worked for a full solid before year. Before this even... Aye, mate, even before it's... Aye, mate. So it was some graft. Truth. Some graph, man, right? So I was doing all that. I was working six days a week selling motors, and I was working sort of seven days a week. And then um, I finished with that bud, mate, because it wasn't a healthy relationship, you know what I mean? It was a bad relationship. And I moved back up the road, right? And then the young team got published, man, within a month. It was a Times Best Seller, you know what I mean? And then it was, things were starting to happen, you know what I mean? It blew up, man. It did blow up last year. You know think, what I mean? Did you think to yourself, I never, I never in a million years, I never thought this was Mate, I walked down that fucking floor like uh, the happiest guy in the world, and I mean it, not, nothing to do with it. Mate, right? just the happiest guy in the world. I felt like a weight, mate, had been lifted off my very soul, you know what I'm talking about? Like, because I'd been working for fucking eight years on this now, right? It's half People probably think you just. Overnight success. You picked up a laptop and you wrote about that. Was it job done like, within a year? Mate, it was a, it was fucking, I thought it would kill me and it almost did kill me a couple of times with this fucking just with mental health and physical health. Went down to 12 stone and all that and then I walked along that floor and I seen a big stack of books, you know what I mean? I'm like, wow, we're done. And that, you know, and then it's just been going from, from strength to strength, like working in the jail with the boys, right, helping boys, right, getting back, man, doing community work, right, making sure, like, try to tell that story, man, about when I was at rock bottom, I mean, I know what it feels like to be at the bottom of the pile. Was at this point. No, mate, and, like, cunts meet me and they're like, fuck, you like, fucking, you've no age today, you're like fucking Benjamin Button, right, and I'm laughing because I looked so fucked up then, I mean, I look out younger now and... Um, I'm still I'm still in recovery, right? And all addicts will tell you that, right? It's not I'm not tempted to use drugs, but I'm dealing with mental health, right? I'm just trying to get my physical health and well being back and it takes years, mate. It's a, it's a lifelong apprenticeship. Obviously with the, the book Success led us on to the BBC documentary, um, Save the Dave, and it's just especially the the West of Scotland, Glasgow in particular, because obviously Gary McKeith, Zip Kiss, Ryan King, uh, Vida Vida, and then the bigger boys. The more Achilles, the Scott Brown, mm. obviously George Bowie, who's uh, I work for, we do, I do a lot of work for George, so yeah. Um, and then you get the big man, Ricky, 
comes on. I know, mate. I know. It was well. surreal. It I've, been, I've been trying. I've been pressing them for I don't know how long to try and get to come to this. Um, it was it, surreal, mate. I think oh, it just came together. I think he said to me at the, um, at the we done the GBX outdoor, and I pulled him that night, and I said, like, and he he mentioned that they said that he was coming up, and he said possibly after that. So we'll see what happens. But get back to mm. the, 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 the documentary. Um, obviously, you spoke with the, the, the PCDG guys came in here and asked both mm. the boys that I know, that I know personally. So I don't know if this is a wee bit of a skip or whether it's kicking about, but there is going to be a TV show. I mate, like for this, for this I, I the the young team um, sold the option um, last year, mate. So it's it's in production, mate. It's starting, right? They're writing it, you know. Um, then what they'll be doing is approaching networks to see who wants to to show it, mate. Basically, so I it's, so it's, it could be Netflix and Johnny, the young team. I don't know where it's going to end up. You know what I mean? That's above my head. For me, right? right what I'm a story consultant, right? So I'm the guy. Basically, right? I'm working with the screenwriter, right? Ben Tago, um, good boy, man. The perf, right? He was into the Raven. He was into the casual scene back up there. And um, I take it away to Johnson. Aye, mate. Aye, aye, mate. So, um, what was I going to say? He's a good, good boy. He gets the scene. He's older than us, man. He's he's in his forties, right? But he gets it and he appreciates it and respects the story and the young team stuff. So, I mate, working with him, making sure they're fantastic, he's right? So, we've been working for months on it, mate. On top of everything else, so um, it's progressing. It is coming. So it's like ah, it's coming, mate. Aye, it's coming. What's next, though? <clears throat> So for, I, so for me, Raveheart, um, moving away from the heavy stuff, because God, my own story, man, is, is heavy, right? And um, there's We've all... only been talking, I don't know, for maybe a bit, just there an hour. I know. And I, the, the, stuff, the stuff I've learned, I, never, I mean, I, we spoke about it before, and I said to you, I was going to ask the hard thing and stuff. 100%. To find out the story. Mate, it's important but, to tell her that stuff, because if you near right people see success, and they see, you know what I mean? So they see what they want to see, right? But the truth is, right, I was I was an authentic guy back then, right? And I did struggle and suffer, right? And I'm still trying to find my way back for all that, right? Um, and I'm trying to help other people do that and all, you know? I was going to say that I think it's important that uh, hopefully people do watch this um, and they, they listen to your story because it might help them. It's 100%. 100%. Uh, and I, and I, I mean, I'm still burying pals, right? And, like, it's the frustration sometimes when you see the politics and it just, like, my mate, you know what I mean, committed suicide last year, right? And you're just like, pfft, I don't know. What's a, what's a hardship? Still, people are still suffering in their communities, mate. Do you know what I mean? It sometimes feels like they go backwards, you know what I mean? And you just need to do what you can. I just think a lot of people, I don't know if a lot of people now think that the, the young team aspect and the, the gang culture's now gone away. We're dealing with a legacy, it 20 might, years of that, but anyway. Got, as I was going to say, it might have gone away, but... And here at, at Disney, for a lot of people, um, and a lot of people still get, you know, a lot of people still get mixed up in stuff that happened twenty years ago. Hundred percent. So so daft. But as I say, I, I thank you for your genuineness for coming on and being. My pleasure. My pleasure. And I hope that it will help other folk to. It's not odd, doom and gloom. It's not odd. Our story's not odd, doom and gloom. And it gets a bad, it gets a lot of bad press. Cause see all the rave stuff, right? And brotherhood in the community and the way we were, right? See my pals back then. They are like brothers, and I still consider them that way. Do you know what I mean? And people are like, "Oh, do you ever see the young team?" And I'm like, "Of course, of course." Still talk to them I, I, day, I, pretty much, I do you know what I mean? Like, we're still best pals. You know what I mean? Well, and, just not right. And I, team on a walk. We're not kicking about mera peaks. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the young, the young team safely disbanded. You know what I mean? But the bond remains, right? And so I want, you know, I did the heavy lifting in the young team, I think. So my next book, I want to go full on crazy, man, right? It's Rave Heart, it's called, right? So it's think about, like, human traffic, right? Only versus 1984, right? So the George Orwell classic dystopian fiction. And I was sitting thinking in my head, right, about Thatcher trying to ban Rave and all that, and I was thinking, fucking, they Tories, you know what I mean? And I was sitting thinking, what if they actually did ban it, but, right? What, what, if, what if it was banned? Seen? What if it was banned, right? And I was like... Scotland wouldn't accept that, right? No fair Tory government, right? So my book starts with basically the historical stuff all that, right? So basically how all that happened, right? And how they tried to ban rave. But then this new Conservative Party comes to town and they basically ban rave. So Scotland are up into like rave paramilitary violence and there's these paramilitary rave groups kicking about. And it's a weird, weird and wonderful, mate. It's loads of wacky comedy, right? And like, it's, it's, it doesn't take itself too seriously. No. But it, it appreciates music, you know what I mean? And it appreciates... It's talking about drugs, of course, but it's more about music. But you've went to hard time. It's like cultural high, mate. Like it's still celebration, man. And I, I, I think it's still highly written. I mean, I think it'll challenge, man. And it'll, I think the literary elite and all that will look and they'll go, fuck, this guy's crazy, man. It's, but it's a good book, no? I mean, it's well written. And 
So hopefully, mate, it's, I'm, I'm, I would say I'm three quarters of the way through it, but I've got more ideas and I'm like getting into the jungle and all that and, and the story. Do you and, find yourself writing bits and then having to start again because you think there's something else? And- <laughs> mate, this one's been crazy. I've been in and out and I've got a stack to read today and I want to do loads of research and read about things. And oh, it's, it's, a, it's a real craft, this one. Because see the young team, that's a fictionalised version of my own life. Right? This is a dystopian fantasy. It's a high concept. So, do you know what I mean? You're writing about politics and all that. And it's if I pull it off and I do stress off, it's got to be class. You know what I mean? Can I see it on TV or a film? Definitely. That is available if anybody wants it. There's <laughs> any uh, budding um, directors or producers out there, um, it is uh, available for uh, the big screen. So, no, but seriously, Graham, mate, thank you very thank much, you, mate. Thanks for having uh, me. And I was just saying, thank you for coming on. Thank and, you, mate. And giving us your story, mate. I really appreciate it. All the best, mate. Cheers, mate.